Hello and welcome to introduction on higher order filters. Right, first we are going to discuss the Q factor of filters and what it means for us for band pass, band reject, low pass and high pass filters. Then we will discuss how um, higher order filters uh, function in terms of roll off and, and, and such. And then in this series, we are going to look at five different filters and their responses. So we will just have a look at the circuits and the basic equations and then the response of each. Right. So first, the Q factor. So the band pass and the band reject filter each has a Q factor. Okay, so the Q factor has to do with a band pass filter, how sharp it cuts off. Okay, so the cutoff rate is directly related to the Q of the filter, so the quality factor. Okay, so the higher the Q, the narrower this area becomes, so it is related to the bandwidth as well. Right, so high Q filters is to isolate single frequencies. Right, so the bandwidth of a filter is measured from the plus minus, no, sorry, the minus 3 dB point, and what I meant is left and right of the center frequency. Um, so this minus 3 dB bandwidth defines the area where we have signal and when we're at half power. Okay, so the center frequency divided by the bandwidth gives us the Q or the sharpness of this filter. Right, so we can find a bandwidth by taking the higher frequency, subtracting the lower frequency, and if we only have those two, if we multiply the two, take the root, we can find our center. And with that, we can calculate our quality factor. Right, for band reject filters, that is when we want to get rid of a single frequency or a small range of frequencies. The Q factor, if it's a low value, we have a very slow ease into this hole that we, we created here, and the higher the Q factor, the more bandwidth is available before we have this dive into the nothingness, um, as I can call it, so basically before this frequency that we want to isolate disappears. Okay, so a high Q means that we have a very narrow bandwidth before the frequency that we are getting rid of. Right, in terms of high pass and low pass filters, we typically have a natural response. Okay, so second order filter has a minus 40 decibel per decade cut off rate. Right, so the lower the Q, the longer it takes to go down here. The higher the Q, the, freak, uh, the, the, the gain will first go up and then start to decrease, but at the same rate. Okay, so if this Q grows to be too large, we can have resonance or instability because these filters typically use a bit of positive feedback. So that we can adjust the Q and the frequency at the same time. But with this resonance, we can have a sharper roll off for our filters. Okay, so we can manipulate what happens around this corner right here. Do we have an easy going down or do we have a very sharp cut off in the end? 
So all the second order low pass and high pass filters will be defined by a Q factor and the corner frequency. Right. So the cutoff rate of a filter for higher than second order is the plus minus of order multiplied by 20 decibels per decade. The plus minus is whether it's low pass or high pass. The order of the filter multiplied by 20, so first order filter cuts off at 20 decibels per decade, a second order at 40, a third at 60, and so on and so forth. Okay, so for a first order filter, n is 1, higher order filters, n is larger than 1. The corner frequency that we measure remains in the same position and we still measure it at minus 3 decibels no matter what the order is. Okay, so to construct these filters we are going to use KRC or Salen key filters and we will design them using filter tables. For this we can use cascade designs. So you can add a bunch of second order filters and a first order filter to get the response that you want. So you have these long chains of filters um, making up your, your response. And this is possible for high pass and low pass filters. So if you use a second order KRC filter, if you have even numbers, you can just cascade the amount of filters. And if it's an odd number, you need to add a first order filter at the end. And this will also do the gain correction in your filter if needed. And the next video will be on the different first order filters that we have for inverting and non-inverting and things to maybe avoid. Right. So, the cutoff rate of our higher order filters for this I just cascaded a bunch of first orders to demonstrate the cutoff rate. So we have our pass band gain. And as we go to the cutoff for the first order filter for the first decade, there will be a decrease of 20 decibels. For the second, it would be 40. For a third order, it would be 60. And for a fourth order, it would be 80. And this will double in the next decade. So the attenuation will happen much quicker the higher the order of a filter is. Okay, so the order is related to the amount of cascades that we will have in the end. Right, so just to show you, this is a second order low pass filter. No need to worry about the equations at this point. So, um, too much. So this filter has a specific gain, a cutoff frequency, and a Q factor. Now the Q factor is dependent on all the components and the gain right here. So typically the component choices will be that you manipulate your Q factor with the gain of this amplifier. So there will be a specific gain which is related to the Q. And then here with a positive feedback side, that will be your cutoff frequency mainly. Okay, so second order filter, there is two reactive components as well. So that can also be an indicator of the order of a filter. Right. So, high pass filter, the positions of the capacitors and the resistors just changed, and the equations remained roughly the same, and in here the positions of the capacitors and the resistors just changed. So this is also just a second order high pass filter. Right. Band pass filters. They are the ones that have this nice area around a center frequency. So, again, the gain 
is responsible for the Q factor mainly. Here it is also a little bit dependent on the ratio of some of the resistors that you have. The center frequency depends on all the component values. And note that the final gain of this amplifier is not just the gain of this two resistors at the output, but it is also a function of all the components and the gain that you selected. Okay, so the bandpass filter is a little bit more complicated. One thing to note is we have positive feedback here. So all of these filters will have some point where the gain will make this filter into an oscillator. Okay, so you can't boost the gain using this at any point. It is purely for the Q factor and it will resonate and be an oscillator if you do this wrong. Right, so next one is another bandpass filter, but this one uses multiple feedback paths. Um, but it doesn't have any positive feedback. So this filter can be used for very high Q um, filtering schemes, where I would avoid high Q filtering for this bandpass filter or a KRC bandpass filter. And you have your Q, which is dependent on your component choices. Your final gain is dependent on the component choices. And we don't have additional gain in this problem. So with your component choices or the Q factor selection, this filter will have a specific output gain, right? Which you can correct by splitting the input resistor R1 into a voltage divider. Um, and with that, you can correct the gain or the total gain of the filter so whenever you need to do some gain correction remember that you can use a voltage divider on the input side so this is typically or usually just a series resistor sitting here as r1 and then you can take r1 and split it up into different resistors and you can correct the gain of this filter or select the gain of this filter. Right, and much higher Q factors is possible for this particular configuration. Right, lastly, the band reject filter. This is the one where we can get rid of certain frequencies. Typical place where we can use this is to get rid of that pesky 50 hertz signal or 60 hertz if you're American um, that's sitting in your circuit sometimes and you can just place a filter like this high Q factor on um, the power uh, power supply basic frequency um, and you can get rid of that in your circuit or from your signal and here the Q factor is again dependent on the gain. And we have a basically equal component configuration here. Um, so you can select the capacitors, resistors. Remember, if you put similar capacitors in parallel, you can get the double. And if you put certain resistors in parallel, you can get half the resistance. Right, so easy to design. And the final gain again is this RA and RB right here in a non inverting configuration. And that is what it looks like. So, a little bit of gain due to RA and RB, and this dip at 50 hertz where we designed it and 
this right here is our bandwidth and it is extremely small this is at 50 Hertz this right here is sitting at 40 and on this side that's more or less 65 ish okay so it's a bit off but it is functional so that is the filters that we will be doing in this next video series and we will go into depth for all of them and yes thank you for watching